So you're interested in how birds fly. This triangle right here is a representation of a bird called a boy. Now, here's a hundred boys, but at the moment they're flying around aimlessly and without really any sense of proximity. We could fix this by applying three simple rules. And after we apply these three rules, you could see that they exhibit a sort of flocking behavior. And this right here is like the core of the boy's algorithm. I'll be coding it up in C++ and Raylib, along with explaining all the steps along the way and these three rules. And then here are two extra clips that showcase a more in-depth view of the collision circles. But yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, let's start at the very beginning. What are boids? Well, a boid is a birdoid object, or really just a representation of a bird. Now they're typically shown as little triangles that move around your screen and just do whatever, but they always follow three simple rules. These are separation, alignment, and cohesion. Now, separation, the void will just move away from voids uh, in a certain radius. Then we have alignment, it'll move towards the average direction of voids within a certain radius. And then we have cohesion, which the void will move towards the center of mass of other voids in a radius. Uh, and after you implement those, you'll have the voids algorithm. Here are the files we need. So we'll need our main file, which is named voids, and then we'll need a void and real vector class. That's it. We're going to want to start with our voids file. This is our main file, which has all of our window functionality. Right now we're just going to want to draw a window. So screen width, screen height, uh, initialization of our window. This right here is our game loop. And then once the user exits, we can call the close window function. And We'll come back to this file after we implement the other classes. Okay, so next we're gonna wanna create our header files. So we have a void header and a real vector header. Now last time I spent too much time talking about the header files, so we'll keep it short and concise. But the header file is just an initialization of our variables and functions. So we could just take a quick glance at it and nothing more. Just remember that when we're coding up the main class, it's referencing our initializations from the headers. Okay, so we could start by coding up our real vector class. Now, first we have our vector constructors that initialize our X and Y components. Then we have four simple vector functions. So here, the vector addition, vector subtraction, constant multiplication on a vector, and then getting the magnitude of the current vector. Those are their implementations. And then we have getting the angle of the current vector, which has a little bit of a more complex implementation, but it just uses simple trigonometry. And that's our real vector class. All right, now we're gonna implement our void class. So first we're gonna start with our constructors. So what does the void need? An X and Y position, a VX and VY velocity, a danger zone, a sight zone, and a size. Next, we have a function that will move our void. So we get the screen width, the screen height, we add the velocity to our position, moving the void, and then those last two lines, they constrain the void within the width and height of the screen. And next we have a function to show the void. Uh, for this one, I'll have a little animation to explain it. So this dot is a representation of our void's position. And this arrow is a representation of the velocity vector. Now we care about this vector's direction, but not its magnitude. We want its magnitude to be equal to the size of our void. And that's what this chunk of code does. It scales the vector so its magnitude is equivalent to the size of our void. We call this vector u. Then we make another vector in the opposite direction and half the magnitude, um, and we call it move to middle. This will help center our triangle around our void's position later. Next, we rotate vector u using the coordinate rules for rotation to draw points at the end of the vector. And then we use the move to middle vector to move them all back to somewhat center the uh, position. And that's what that chunk of code does. Now it's not perfectly centered, but you know, it's okay. And then we finally draw our triangle lines. And then that is our void class. That's it. All right, so we're gonna go back and look at our main file. This is our voids class. We're gonna wanna add in some new header files. So our void header, cmath, standard library, time header, and vector header. Next, we're gonna wanna make an instance of our void class. This void is gonna be at position 100, 100, velocity 1, 1, 
its danger zone is 15, sight zone is 40, and size 10. And then every frame, we're going to move the void and then show the void. And let's see how that looks like. Okay, so we could compile our project, then we can run our executable, and then we could see that we have our void here. And it's just going in the direction that we specified it to go, but then it just stops. That's not ideal, so we're gonna wanna fix that. So let's get back to coding. Okay, so to solve this problem, what we'll do is we'll create a function called bound void. Now, it's just gonna be four your statements that say, if the void is beyond, some position, then we'll have its velocity be changed every frame to move in the opposite direction of the wall it's going to hit. So here's a little example. If it crosses one of those lines, the arrow represents the velocity change that we're going to uh, add to the velocity of the void. Now, we're also going to want a function to limit the speed of the void. So it'll have some minimum speed and maximum speed. Uh, we do this by grabbing the speed of the void, it's the magnitude of the velocity, if the speed is not zero, we will set the speed to either the minimum speed if it's less than that or the maximum speed if it's greater than that. How we do this is let's say we have this velocity which is greater than our speed. We will divide it by our speed to make it a unit vector. And then let's say we multiply it by maximum speed. Uh, and then that gets us a velocity which is our maximum speed. We could do the same thing for the minimum speed if we need to. And that's what those two of statements do. And those are the two functions we'll need. All right, so first we're gonna wanna create some variables for those functions. The turn factor, turn padding, min speed and max speed. And then we could just call those two functions. So the limit speed and then we bound the void um, each frame. Yeah, so let's see how that looks like. Okay, so here's our code. Um, we could compile it and then we run it and we can see our void flying and when it hits wherever the turn padding is we can see that it rotates now it doesn't look very smooth that's because it's not very it's not going very fast so if we increase its speed actually let's increase it to like an absurd amount just to see that the limit speed is working it should have a max speed of three yeah so that looks about right Oh, maybe let's increase the max speed to six. It looks a little more natural. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, what do we wanna do next? We want more than one of these on the screen. So let's go and do that. Okay. So before adding multiple voids, we're going to want to increase the screen width and screen height to 1500 by 1000. Then we'll have three variables, which are the danger zone, sight zone, and size of each void. We're going to seed our random generator, make a vector of voids, and then we'll make 100 voids at random positions uh, on the screen. And after that, for each frame, we'll loop through every single void, and for each void, we'll limit its speed, bound it, and move and shove it. Also, at the top of our code, we're gonna to wanna to have these two lines so we could use vector and pair more easily. All right, let's see how this looks like. Okay, so we could compile our code and run the executable, and then we could see that we have a hundred boys on screen. Well, I'm sure you're not gonna count every single one, but the point is we have a bunch of them on screen. Now they're just flying around aimlessly. So we'll have to write a function that actually implements the core of the boys algorithm, which are the three rules that I talked about before, separation, alignment, and cohesion. So let's get right into that. All right, now that everything's in place, we could create the function that implements our three rules. We'll call it alter void path, and it's gonna take in all our voids, the void we're altering, and then the three factors for the three rules. We'll have some variables uh, called neighbors, average velocity, average position, and then close difference. We're gonna loop through all of the voids inside this function, and we're gonna ignore the void that we're currently looking at, which we're altering, and we're gonna find the difference between the void we're altering and the void we're looking at inside this loop. We're gonna get the magnitude of this difference to get the distance between the two voids, 
and if the distance is less than the danger zone or less than the sight zone, then we're going to do something. If it's less than the danger zone, we'll go ahead and add the difference between the two voids to the close difference. And if the distance happens to be zero, then we'll go ahead and move the void that we're currently altering so no voids overlap each other. Now if the distance is less than the sight zone, we'll add the velocity and position of the void that we're looking at inside this loop to the averages. Now outside of this loop, if neighbors is greater than zero, so that means the voids we found in the sight zone but outside the danger zone, we'll actually average the average velocity and average position by dividing by neighbors. And then we'll implement alignment and cohesion. So alignment is this line you see that uses average velocity. It's going to be average velocity subtracted by the arboid's velocity multiplied by its matching factor. And then cohesion will be the average position subtracted by our position, our arboid's position, multiplied by the centering factor. And you may be wondering where the subtraction comes from, and I'll show a little animation for that. So we can imagine for cohesion, this is cohesion's example, but it also works for alignment. We have our average position and our position. So if we subtract them, we get a vector from our position to the average position. And that's kind of how we want to move. We want to move our position to the average. That's what that's doing. And then finally, we have our separation rule, which just adds the close difference uh, multiplied by its avoidance factor to our velocity. And all of these are added to the velocity. And that's it for this function. Now we alter our main function where we want to add a few variables. So the avoidance matching and centering factors we were talking about. Now these are tunable, so you could change them as you please if you want to try to make the simulation look better. And then in the main game loop for each frame, we're going to want to loop through every single void and then alter each void's path, limit its speed and bound the void. And then in another loop, we move the void. We don't want to move the void in the same loop because that would affect the alter void path function for the other voids. Now let's see how this looks like. All right, well, that's it. So we should be able to compile our code and then run our executable. And we see that the voids flock together. Well, there you go, that's the simulation. But let's have a little more fun with it. Let's try editing it up a bit, tuning some of the parameters. And also I'll introduce the ball that you saw at the beginning of the video that was moving around and all the boards are flying around or away from it. So let's go and do that. But technically that was the boards algorithm. This is basically it. Okay. So let's go ahead and add that circle I was talking about. So we could call it like a player, since I guess that's what it is. You'll be controlling it with your mouse. So it's going to start at zero, zero. Mm, you know, we'll give it a radius. So player radius is equal to 100. Then uh, it has to follow your mouse, right? So the player's position on every frame will be your mouse mouse's position. So player dot y is equal to get mouse y. Player dot x is equal to get mouse x. We're also going to have to draw it. In this case, our player is just a circle. So player dot x, player dot y, player radius. And then let's make it red, because why not? Okay. Now, what else? Well, <clears throat> The voids are going to have to avoid the player, right? Uh, as it stands, if we make do this, sure, we have a circle, but the voids are, you know, they're not avoiding it. So let's get the difference, oops, the difference between the voids position and the player's position. And if that the magnitude, oops, wait, this is a real vector, yeah. Now if the magnitude of that is less than the Boyd's sight zone plus the player radius, which means like their two circles uh, can see each other, or yeah, that's kind of what it is then 
you can go ahead and alter the voids dot velocity to be the voids velocity added to this difference. And it should be good. So you could see them flying away now. Isn't that cool? All right, well, they're not flying away fast enough, so maybe we could give them a higher max speed. All right, well, one last thing. We could also draw the circles around them, which represent their danger zones and sight zones. So for example, the center of this is just X and Y. Wait, position that X, position that Y. Um, the danger zone, and then we could have the danger zone be red, and then draw a circle, position dot X, position dot Y. Oh, it's circle lines, not the circle. Oops. And could this be the sight zone? And this could be green. And then if we make a pilot, we could see the circles around them. You could see that as soon as this red ball gets near any of these green circles, they will fly away immediately. Well, I'd say that's it for this. And thanks for watching. It's been a great time working on this and getting it all set up. So I hope you learned something and yep, 